In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the New Zealand dollar. And I want to start from the very beginning. I was having a conversation with one of my students, and he asked, he says, Lan, I want to see you start from the very beginning. What do you do? Um, oftentimes, my videos are very short. They're, you know, two, three minutes long. And all we talk about is the entry strategy. So he said he wanted to see what I would do if I was to open up a brand new chart and try to decide what to do and what type of a trading strategy to make in that chart. So I figured the New Zealand dollar would be a good example. And so what I've done is I've opened up the New Zealand dollar and this is the daily chart. And this is how I would approach a new trade within a new market that I haven't really been following very closely. So the first thing I would do is I look at the daily chart. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I'm going to completely analyze the daily chart. And you can come through and do this with me. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to notice that we have a nice little head and shoulders formation back here. Now we're going way back in time, but nonetheless, this is kind of what I like to do. I like to come through and I like to identify different patterns uh, within the overall trend of the long term chart of the long-term market and then I want to come in and I want to put my Fibonacci rulers in here and I'll come in and draw the Fibonacci rulers in here and just kind of identify where this mark has been whether it's been actively following the Fibonacci uh, rules or whether it's been breaking the rules and you can see here this has been uh, nicely coming I came right down to 161.8 at the bottom of this overall long-term trend back here and then we're going to come in here and we're going to just draw an Elliott wave in here you see this is our one two three top formation we got a nice little Elliott wave coming in here X one two this is three four five and then we get a nice little ABC pattern in here so we got this nice little Elliott wave that came down off of this uh, downtrend we have a good a good uh, a, a well-formed, I guess you could say, little head and shoulders down here on the bottom for the retracement or the turnaround of this market. And of course you can see the breaking of this trend line came in right about the same place as the blue lights. And this market started to rally once again. Of course we've got a nice little uh, hesitation formation in here, what we call a little wedge formation or a little flag formation. It's a continuation formation. The market rallied up out of this uh, head and shoulders, went sideways a little bit and then broke higher. And this market continued to rally all the way up into this topping formation. Now this this market didn't come up and break this previous high so I make note of that and I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to very quickly draw a horizontal line across there and you can see that this market came up a little higher previous it came up and tested didn't quite make it again we get this little ABC top formation in here and uh, you can see that if I draw a trend line just from the top to here you can see we're still on a we're on a downward slope here which means that we're changing over from a high to a low now we haven't broke a previous low in here yet so uh, the rules that we have here are higher highs and higher lows makes an uptrend and lower highs and lower lows makes a downtrend. Well, we haven't got a lower low yet, so we're still in a, kind of a stagnation mode or a sideways mode. If we come in here with our triangle formation, of course, we can come in and very simply draw a little wedge formation in here and get ourselves uh, an area of support and resistance across this, this trend line in here. And I'm just going to draw that along, as you can see with that trend and you can see we got a nice little area of support across the bottom resistance across the top and we're going into a wedge formation now a wedge formation generally generally speaking drops out the bottom doesn't have to uh, just the probability is generally say if you have a wedge formation you're going to see it drop out the bottom but we also know that triangle formations are continuation formations so we would count a triangle formation like this this would come up from the bottom of the trend into the into the triangle so there's one two there'd be three four Five, and then we'd see a rally out the top to six. So that's another thing that we need to keep in mind. When analyzing the long-term chart, there are two other very important principles of technical analysis that we need to look at. And one of those is the seasonal nature of markets. And of course, I want to come down here and I want to turn on the seasonals. Now, if you notice the seasonal nature of markets in here, this is the seasonal trend. Now, the blue line or the blue background here is a representative is, is representative 10 years of averages, and then the red line is 15-year average. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to look at this and see if the market itself is moving in correspondence with the 10 and 15 year seasonal average and then find out where we're at here at the end of the chart whether we anticipate a rally or a fall in price so as we can see this market has traditionally speaking had a nice rally up through this time frame which we received again this year so the market spin seems to be following the seasonal trend uh, quite nicely and you can see right through here and then 
this is a kind of an interesting peak in here. You see that we have the, the general fallback right in this point here where we get this uh, retracement. And the same thing happens here in the seasonal trend. We get that retracement coming back in here. And then we get this nice little Elliott wave here. Notice that these peaks in here on the seasonal nature of the trend kind of correspond right perfectly with these peaks. Now we anticipate generally a rally through this time frame, you can tell, but we got the drawdown instead. So it's called a counter seasonal trend, although we still got the rally peaks, which is very interesting, just going in the opposite direction. Uh, and then we got kind of this bottoming formation in here, and then the market seems to kind of reset itself and it goes right back in to the seasonal trend once again and you can see even having this little bottoming formation in here at the right location and then the rally uh, going into expiration now the last thing that we look at here is what's going to happen next and of course right up in here we have this topping formation this little triangle or wedge formation and then we see that in the seasonal nature of things we anticipate a blow off coming into expiration which is also uh, very key here, indicating that we want to put our um, our bias towards the uh, short side of this market, which is another reason why down here on the smaller time range chart we took a short position in here. Another very key component to this uh, trading strategy is coming down here and looking at the commitment of traders. Now the commitment of traders is very important because it's going to tell us what the large banks and hedge funds are doing with their money and how they feel about this market. So I'm going to come down here, just come into the settings, I'm going to turn off the commercial traders and I'm going to turn off the small speculators. And I just want to see how the large banks and hedge funds are looking. And as you can see, they rallied up with this nice big long rally here and then they went mostly short in this region and you'll notice that they don't have a lot of increased confidence in the market rallying and continuing higher during this uh, part of the the trend right here you can see they're very flat almost neutral on this and in fact during this long uptrend they were for the most part on the short side of this market so not giving a lot of credence to an increased high or an increased rally in this market this is very indicative of a market that looks like it's going to turn and the commitment of traders does not feel like there's a lot of upside potential on this market and will probably take some additional shorts on this side and continue down that's kind of uh, how the trend is reading to me now if we come and turn off the commitment of traders and just quickly look at uh, the momentum itself and the stochastics indicator you can see that we're coming into what looks like a very neutral uh, time frame in this market which is what we see reflected up in the chart uh, but the downside potential is again where we're anticipating this uh, increase in uh, uh, downside pressure on the stochastics indicator as it comes down into the oversold region in here from the upper from the upper overbought region. And so this is again giving us some downside pressure. So when we come down to the smaller time frame chart, we can use those types of indicators to give us some indication of the downside pressure from the longer term fundamentals of the market out here on the daily chart. Now this is out here on the daily chart and of course we can come in and we can make some additional predictions using our Fibonacci ruler but I'm going to go down to a smaller time frame at this point and you can see over here for my New Zealand dollar I have a daily chart I have a range 12, a 60 minute, a 15 minute and a, and a range 6. Now for those of you who have followed me you know that I prefer the range bar 6 uh, and the range bar chart so the range bar, the range bar style of charts. Now if I come down to a range bar 12 you'll notice that this is kind of the trend that we're seeing on an overall range bar 12 you see this nice little downtrend in here but if we come back out of the daily chart you can see what that downtrend is it's just this last piece this last trend from four to five okay that's all we're seeing on the range bar 12 is from four to five on that last count wave okay so now we're coming down we're starting to look at a very much smaller time frame of this chart and we're trying to look at what side of the market we want to get into on a longer term or a shorter term time frame again I prefer the range bar charts if we look at a 60 minute you'll notice that a 60 minute chart is almost exactly the same as a range bar 12. Now I prefer the range bars just because it cleans up the chart a little bit doesn't uh, quite have so many of these uh, wild bars in here. Um, it's just a little cleaner uh, because there's no time involved it's it's mostly just trend so the range bars are just trend again there's the range bar 12 you can see that has no time involved it's just trend and then there's the 60 minute chart which is basically the same thing. So if you want to work off of one or the other, whatever your preference is, it doesn't matter to me, but I, I kind of lean towards the range bar charts. But you can see range bar 12 range and 60 minute are very similar. Also, if we come down to the 15 minute chart, 
you'll notice that I have the 15 minute chart in here as well as the range bar 6 chart and the range bar 6 chart and their 15 minute chart are almost again exactly the same the only difference is that the range bar chart which is one I kind of lean towards I, I prefer the range bar chart the range bar chart has uh, fewer price bars because there is no time involved again 15 minute chart has the time involved now you can see down here on these smaller time frames I've drawn in some of the trend lines now again back to the range bar 12 or the 60 minute chart is just the last small piece between 4 and 6 or excuse me 4 and 5 of the overall long term daily chart so we're trying to get ourselves and establish into where we are at in this market if we expect this market to break out the bottom we'd want to of course be taking a short position if we expect it to rally out the top we'd want to be taking a long position we might want to wait if we think it's going to rally out the top wait for the market to prove that it's going to rally break above this area of resistance and take a market uh, long or try and get in a little bit early on the reversal and use that as an area of that area of resistance is like a rubber band to pull us higher and so there's some games that you can play in here try to get in a little bit earlier using these area of support and resistance as rubber bands to pull the market towards those areas because there's going to be a large number of stops sitting on the outsides of those areas of support and resistance so we can actually use that in our favor so as we come down here again 60 minute chart 15 minute chart we're going to drop all the way down I want to drop down into the 15 and the 16 minute chart now again if we look at the 15 minute chart notice that from the 60 to the 15 okay is just this last piece right in here this last little uh, part of this uh, of, of the 60 minute is all we're looking at down here on the 15 minute chart or this the range six and you can see I've drawn the uh, the the Fibonacci projection here you can also see that I've drawn the trend line across the top of all those peaks so if we go back out to the 60 minute once again this line right here this big long line that you're seeing here is also represented down here as it's coming across the top of these peaks and so you want to be very conscientious of the 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 chart that you're looking at the time frame you're looking at and how it is working in relationship with the longer term time frame again 60 minute down on the range six all we're looking at is this very tiny little piece down here and so if I draw my Fibonacci rulers in here you can see if I come in here and draw a projection tool in here for longer position you can see that my rally point is you know pointing higher here coming up breaking at the uh, trend line above this point here looking for a continuation of the uptrend or if we're going to go and look for the downtrend we come in we can do the same thing and we can go from a, a you know one of these peaks up here looking for the market to continue down so this is where we end up with kind of a uh, questionable location of where we think we're going to get into the market whether we're going to get in short or long it's kind of at this center location here of the market so this is where we come down to the smaller time frame again either 15 minute or the range bar six and you can see down here on the range bar six we've drawn those same ABC Fibonacci projections in here one taking you long one taking you short depending on how you've drawn that in there and then we've taken the positions one or the other depending on which direction our very short term our range bar six chart is telling us to go now in this case we took a long and then it didn't pan out so we reversed the position took a short position here off the arrow and of course you could use the intercept order off the blue lights but this market dropped and is moving in our favor you can see in this case we're up 160 dollars uh, off of this short position uh, at this point we want to bring our stop in here and drop a stop in and probably just stop our bra we'll just bring that right to break even at this point if that market comes back against us we'll scratch out but the name of the game here at this point is to stay in the market as long as we can again maybe move out to uh, a longer term time frame chart like maybe out to the 60 minute and we can start managing our position from a longer term time frame trying to capture a longer term uh, trend of the overall market if we want to go out to maybe a four hour chart once we get to this position or all the way out to the daily chart that's our option that's something that's available to us and we can start to manage our position from these longer term trades uh, longer term time frames longer term charts trying to look for the longer term position in this case if we're going to go for a 50 percent retracement of the last major move you can see that we come in here with our one two three projection tool off of the top of this formation here and we get kind of a Fibonacci cluster 
right down in this very important region which is our sweet spot of the Fibonacci ruler and that would be our target location we would anticipate from this position our entry point down in here so around two thousand dollars if it just reached the 130.9 percent projection off of the one two three ABC tool or the 50 percent retracement level of the overall longer term trend now we do have to keep in mind that we have the expiration day of this contract coming in play so if the market gets too close to the expiration we may have to roll over into the next contract month but that's no problem we can easily do that but this is our overall long-term projection and how we would get into and take advantage of an overall longer term trend using smaller term time frame charts moving down through time getting down to our execution and our entry strategy down on a very small time frame and then moving back out to the longer term time frames to manage our overall longer term position the number one question I get when people watch my videos is they want to know what software platform I'm using and what indicators I'm using first and foremost if you come to our website tradementors.com you'll notice that we have a section here called tools for traders if you click on tools for traders the software tools in here are listed and you can see the recommended trading tools we have the live trading platforms that we use these are from track and trade track and trade live futures and track and trade Forex. If you click these more info buttons, you can find out more information about the platforms we're using. I also use a plug-in to the live futures version that is called the Bulls and Bears. That's the Bulls and Bears is what turns the price bars red, yellow, and green and gives me the Elliott Wave uh, blue light system. And so that's a plug-in into the live version of Track and Trade, and it works on both uh, the live futures as well as the live Forex. Now some research tools that we love and that we have here listed as well are the trade miner tools. This is trade miner for stocks, futures, and forex. This is one of the research tools that helps us identify the fundamental nature of markets. And then of course we have news miner. News miner is the current active uh, information, scours the internet, tells you what the current news is on any given stock, future, or forex, and then ranks them which ones or which markets are in play. So again, if you want to have a little bit of information about the tools that we use here at Trade Mentors, come to our website, www.tradementors.com, and click on the Tools for Traders button.